Welcome back to Community Heroes Table Talk. We're back with another episode talking about technology with Treve Willis. How are you doing, Treve? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you talk about your experience so far in technology and what you've achieved? Uh, well, I've been inside the uh, the technology world for several years, dealing with um, you know wireless devices and um, dealing with um, uh, networking and dealing with platforms and um, dealing with all kinds of software for the disabled. And, um, you know, I've been doing it since 2008. So it's um, pretty interesting because what I can do is I can be able to um, route um, different forms together for is dealing with uh, the elderly and the people with special needs. That's so cool. What kind of I know you have like a business um, that you do transportation. How how did you get started with that? Um, I started back in 2015. I started in transportation there. And uh, basically I was, um, my grandmother, she was sick years ago. And I was transporting her back and forth to the doctor and transporting her to the bank and different uh, religious affiliations and things like that. And then I had an individual that introduced me into the business that helped me get my feet wet in the business back in 2015 um, at an adult daycare center. And um, I started with one vehicle and this is where I'm at now. <laughs> Can you talk about mobile transportation and what the different aspects are? Mobile transportation, uh, kind of elaborate for me. Like for example, the wheelchair and um, getting to like place to place, like using the ramp and stuff like that. How does okay. That so, so, so basically, um, that's a good question, Brandon. Um, glad you brought that up because normally my day consists of waking up and, um, you know, getting the vans prepared, making sure the lifts are ready. And then once we do that, we, um, go to our first pickup location and, uh, we pick up our client and, um, we, we would deploy the lift from the back. We have several different kinds of vans. We have the minivans with the lifts on the, on the side, and we also have the um, the lifts on the rear end of the van, and they deploy out. You put the person up there, lock them in, raise it up, roll them inside the van, and then there's a series of steps of locking the person in the floor with their wheelchairs for as restraints and lap belts and seat belts. Um, once we secure them in, then we get them to dialysis, doctor's appointments, uh, special needs events. We do all kinds of sorts of stuff. What kind of software does the mobile technology use? Um, I use something called Driveware. Um, Driveware, it be able to route me to my different client's house. And it also gives them an ETA of, um, you know, when I'm going to arrive. And it also puts down their uh, special needs and disabilities and things like that in the, in, the, in the comment boxes. So that with that being said, the drivers, my drivers, can be able to pull it up on their phone and it can let them know if the person is paraplegic. It can also let them know um, if the person has a DNR, a do, a do not resuscitate order. Um, it also alerts them if the person is diabetic. Um, and it also alerts them if uh, the person has any behavioral issues. So is it like a advanced Uber? Uh, yeah, yeah, we deal with a lot of those. Um, and then there's a uh, platform that I use uh, because we also transport for Fresenius Healthcare and it's called Safe Ride. And Safe Ride does it as well. They'll send us, um, you know, it's like a platform, kind of like Uber. We'll, we'll accept the trip and um, it also gives us the directions on where to get to the client's house. When you got started in the business, were you, there any competitors or comp did you have any competition in the business? Yeah, I had uh, quite a few and I still do to this day. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that does transportation. Um, but with me, you know, I don't let competition worry me because basically you, 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 um, special, you specialize in every area and aspect that you deal with. You know, some people don't maybe not like, maybe don't like to work at night, you know, like I do at two or three o'clock in the morning. But, you know, you set yourself apart by being extra and doing um, extra things going out the way for the client. Um, for is what we do, we get clients out of bed and then get them into the wheelchair and get them. We have ramps that we deploy outside the house. And, you know, we have a lot of different amenities to where we can get the client to the doctor 
will where the competitor or the city transportation won't go inside the house to do the transport. Was it hard at first to get used to working nights than working mornings? Actually, um, you got to get your rest for the most part. Um, you got to, you know, pace yourself. Um, I've done trips at three to three o'clock in the morning till seven in the morning. Um, doing transports from Duke Raleigh and Wake Med and UNC Chapel Hill. Um, you know, it's an adjustment. You know, if you're a night person, it's not hard for you. But, you know, it, it all depends on what you want to do. There's some companies out there that don't, do not want to work at night. Um, I preferably, I like working at night dealing with transportation. Um, you know, it's quiet. Not, there's not a lot of people on the road. So you have diff different interests. How do you, how do you compete with the companies that won't go out to Chapel Hill or won't go out to Durham, like to the hospitals? Like, how do I compete with them that don't? Um, basically, you just have to you have to sell yourself. You have to let people know what you're available to do, and they have to um, be able to. You have, the, the price has to match with the customer service and the level of service that you provide. Um, so, you know, word of mouth is a, is a uh, very vital tool in today's society because what happens is you do one thing, everybody else knows about it because someone tells somebody. And one thing about being in medical transportation, everybody knows somebody. So when you start doing good work for one facility, um, then everybody else starts to find out and, um, that's when the word passes. You know, I've had people call me at 11 o'clock at night and saying, hey, I was referred to you by someone at Wake Med. And I'm like, who is it? They was like, well, it's such and such. I don't know her. Okay, but the word passes. And your reputation is a plus in this business because you have to have people that really can trust you with their 80-year-old grandmother. Can you talk about cognitive thinking? I mean, cognitive technology. Cognitive technology. Uh, elaborate for me. For example, voice recognition and software like that. Yeah, um, you know, we are starting to get into the cognitive technology um, basically now where we can um, input, you know, a client's name inside our database. And once you start speaking in it, it can start recognizing, you know, the client that you're dealing with and it'll come up for their generic information that falls within what falls with under HIPAA's guidelines um, can't have so much information because you know it violates you know the policies but for as their basic information like name and address and things like that um, we have systems now to where we can talk and it'll recognize the person. How has that helped you all with the commute disability community? Um, it actually helps because it speeds the process up faster and it, um, it's a good record keeping tool so that we can um, be able to reference back to the client that we've dealt with for the day. And then also we have a program with our company where we have a call a buddy compassionate um, buddy system where we go with each other to the doctor. We, we go with our clients to the doctor. Um, doesn't have anything to do with transportation, but say if someone has an 80 year old grandmother and they have to, the daughter or son has to work, uh, we transport them there for is um, excuse me we meet them there but we also have a system to where we can um, voice record everything that transpired in the uh, doctor's appointment so we can relay it back and forth to the loved ones that couldn't make the doctor's appointment and that's called good record keeping versus writing stuff down for that do you have to have like a 24 hour notice for doing stuff like that yeah, a lot of times for your scheduled doctor's appointments, you want a 24-hour notice. Um, but for the most part, for after hours transportation, you just give us a call and we'll um, dispatch a driver if we have one in the area available to do the transport to wherever the facility you're going to. Okay, so like how has technology in the um, classroom, how has that impacted the disability community in changing the way that technology is? Uh, it has changed drastically because I'm still a young chicken. I have graduated high school in 2003. So I have children and um, they are into the tablets and, and things like that. So now it has impacted because 
it gives them a boost of learning and uh, being able to uh, communicate better with, you know, their providers and their doctors and being able to, um, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with um, their professional providers and uh, caregivers. Can you tell us um, different disability accessibilities on the iPad and the iPhone? Uh, voice, uh, voice activation, like we spoke a while ago. Um, you know, you have the uh, things where they can uh, tune in to where if they're blind, um, you know, those things. And then they have those things for the hearing impaired to where it can uh, speak into their uh, devices. And, um, you know, you have uh, things that sound out like people that have learning disabilities, learning curves, they can um, actually be able to enhance and help them out for us if they're not quite comprehending with visual uh, objectives. What what is the how hard is it now? Um, I mean, how easy is it now in the classroom for technology? How easy is it, how easy is it? Yes, um, it's a whole lot easier. Um, you know, it's so much easier now that you have three year olds and you have eight year olds doing it. You know, being able to operate. You know, um, you know your. Um, ugh operating tablets. My three-year-old can operate a tablet to this day. He can operate a cell phone. Um, so it's easier now. It's a plus. Technology has changed from when I was back in school. And it's a plus because it actually uh, gives a one-on-one -on -one hand with the uh, caregivers and the professionals and the nurses and things like that. So then now what's happening is when people have disabilities, it's actually being an added plus for the IEP, you know, for is their plan and objectives for the learning curves and things like to that nature. What kind of stuff do you see in the future happening in the education system with technology and disability? Uh, um, I see uh, robots and I see um, for is um, technology for is helping them um, with speech impairment and um, you know, learning curves. And then it's going to actually, like I said a while ago, it's going to help a lot better with uh, their disability, with their IEP programs, you know, um, written plans. It's going to actually um, help people for as learn a whole lot quicker than it was if they didn't have the technology. Can you talk about, like, on the college level, you have in-class and then online. Can you talk about the difference between somebody that would be in class and online and how what the difference would be in that well in in class you're going to have a lot more one-on-one -on -one hands-on you're going to have a lot more you're going to have an instructor there that's going to be able to um you know uh, give you that one-on-one -on -one assistance versus if you're doing it online the only way you're going to be able to um you know um take the learning up a notch is when you have you know, someone virtually online with them. So the online is going to be a little bit different. It depends on what your learning curve, your learning um, curve is. If some people can sit in front of an instructor all day and do well, some people can't. Some people can't stay focused. Um, they only can stay focused if they're doing it online or if, you know, some people don't even have to study. They can just pick up a book, you know, for five minutes and read it and then pass the test. So there's different many uh, learning objectives in this whole curriculum. Mike, what has your experience been with technology online and stuff like that? Oh, wow. Uh, technology online. Um, I have a whole booking software to where my clients can book trips. And, um, you know, I have it to where, you know, for instance, my transportation company, we can um, route all our vans and the speeds and we can, um, you know, do all those uh fancy things that we used to cannot do back in the day. Um, you know, we've got, uh, for instance, um, virtual, just like we were doing now, you know, years ago, we couldn't do this. The first thing that we was able to do years ago was Skype, you know, but now we can be able to see each other and, you know, doctor's offices now can talk to their clients and have virtual uh, doctor's appointments through online. So there's so much, so many things have changed in this world when compared to when we was growing up. Mike, what is your, what is your experience in technology going to school? What was my experience in technology? Yes. 
wow when i was in high school uh the internet was 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 booming it was big but it, the internet was not as popular as it is now um for as you know we had a lot of learning uh, interactive learning with the um because i was actually my last year of school i was homeschooled so that's how actually i graduated high school was on through homeschool so my computer-based program was all strictly computers you know i did my geometry online i did my algebra online you know i had the headphones on it every day so everything was strictly on computer-based programs and that's how i graduated actually because i had a learning disability for is um you know uh i had a back issue I had a surgery and then i i actually had a learning disability i was labeled with a learning disability um, in, in high school, middle school, elementary school. So this is kind of the reason why I advocate for people with learning disability and learning curves, because, you know, I was once there at one time. Mallory, did you have any experience in technology going through school? Actually, I really didn't, because most of it, no, I really didn't have any experience with technology. Uh, in uh, school at all. It did was mostly take, just te textbooks did you, and... Did you take any online classes, Mallory? I did take a online class in uh, uh, at Wayne Community, but with my attention span for me, I can do a class online, but my sometimes my attention is not always there, or rather, or it's one of those, I need to take a minute, and step away from it for a while because you know staring at a computer screen for a given amount of time you know your eyes are going to start getting get heavy that's why i would rather you know look at a book that I mean i can set it aside if i have to you know i can take my own notes but online you know you go through something and then you don't complete it or you, it times you out so I'd rather, because if, if I have a textbook, I can do it on my own time. Mike, did you have any experience in technology going through school? Oh, this, uh, I'm Trey. Oh. His name's Trey. M Michael, did you have any experience going through technology in school? Um, well, it was very sparse. Um, I had a few uh, learning curves, um, which was what, um, Trey was mentioning during um, school, I had um, with just dealing with computers, the learning curve early on um, in college, kind of, um, you know, it was that transition of online. I tried it um, early on with word processing. So, you know, it's just the fact that um, trying to get through the learning curve and learn um, what what is the expectation of me and kind of what 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 i need to do in the textbook because i know early on my professor met me in person and she was wondering uh was that the best route to take and um i pushed through with confidence and i and i pushed through but um it was more just the transition than it was did i have the ability to to actually learn online I actually, in the end, I did better online than I did on in person because it made me work at my own pace. So my experience in going through school with technology is totally like Mallory's, where I am good at online, but I have to only do like one or two classes. I can't take like a full load of classes because if I take a full load of classes, my GPA would drop because I'm not that good at like, I'm good at technology, but I'm not good at like focusing and knowing like when due dates are and stuff. So I try to take at least one or two classes in tech, one or two classes in online, and then majority of my classes are in class. Is there anything else, Mallory, you would like to add? Is there anything else you would like to add, Mike? at this moment now thank you again Treve, for your in thank you again Treve, for your episode on table talk in technology you can find community heroes on the following social media platforms facebook 
at Community Heroes, Instagram at com underscore heroes, Twitter at com underscore heroes, and you can find us on YouTube at Community Heroes Podcast, along with searching up Community Heroes Table Talk, Disability Table Talk. Thank you again, Treve, for your Table Talk series on technology. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys for having me. Mm -hmm.